Hello, this is Jeff Robertson once again with Penton Audio and Atis Electronics. And this is a short tutorial video on how to actually set up and map your third party controls from your control systems such as your Crestron, AMX, or your VIDI systems to your element controls within your UAP audio digital signal processor design. So let me pull up one of my designs and we'll just go inside here and just look at a few elements. There are several different things that you can actually control via a third party design and it's pretty much anything you can control manually from your GUI um, or control inputs. We could do level controls such as any of your inputs, any of your variable controls within any of your uh, component blocks like you know, my gain controls, I got duckers, I got some stuff here as well. Um, they can be switches like in your selector switches we could actually control you know which channel we want to be on or step it through the channels if we want and of course your level controls your input and outputs the other things you can control are events and if you think about from the previous tutorial videos which are on there on how to set up events within your system such as preset changes um, events can be also message plays so these also can be set by third-party controls and you can also set up control outputs to be an event which also can be set for third-party controls. Let's do a couple of elements here. Let's grab a couple of different types. I will pull up my output module here and I got some faders. I will pull up my selector, you know, source selector right there which has a switch which these are two different types. We got variable and we got a switch. Remember switches can also be like mute buttons on and off type deals as well. I'm going to go ahead and use the selector switch here as one to switch because it's multiple positions so we can step through them and just hit a single bump to go to a value. So on any element I want to do, let's right click on it and I bring up the menu for the element and one of them you see the second line down is third party control. I'm just going to left click to enable it. There we go. Now I go back right click again and I can see that it is indeed enabled for third party control option so that's good I will go to my fader here and same thing just click let's do all four of them just for fun right click and just enable third party now if I just go to any of these now I can see their third party control enable with the check mark all right good enough now that we have enabled certain elements within our design to be third party controllable now we need to go up and actually see what the parameters is going to take and how do we want them to actually operate with our third party command strings. I go up to the view window and we go to the third party control. If I expand this out you'll see third party control. It's about the fourth one down here. Just click on that. brings up my third party control pop up window down here at the bottom. So here are here's the machine that we're talking to because remember there could be 12 UAP machines in a single design here's the actual component block like here's my output B and if you look over here output B and here is the element which is the element actually inside we got you know meters lights mute buttons you know threshold and the element is actually the level you can see here's the title for the elements right here overload volume mute so this is the title level so if I go back here to my third party bring it back up level and then the input one through four and that obviously is one through four here or if you look on the nodes on your on block your component block it's one through four what we need to do is once we do that and we know we're talking to the right one here's my selector switch as you can see we go right here to this control here's the command control center right here and I'm just gonna get on these little three dots to pull up the command for we're gonna say output number one on output B block Whenever you're doing a variable type of control, this is not an on-off type of thing or a trigger. It's actually a variable control. You're going to have two different windows here. This window right here is where you could actually set a set value that you want to go to or target. Also, this will give you your value read where it currently is or its status back to the system if you want to do a read command. If this window up here does these incremental steps up or down if you just want to bump commands to have it go up or down in whatever increment you want. Let's start with a set value. Let's just say I'm going to have three volume buttons or whatever on my touch screen for my Crestron or AMX or VIDI control. One of them's going to say low volume, the other one's going to say normal, and maybe another one's going to say high. And we'll say my low volume level is going to be, let's say negative 12. 
and I'll hit enter and I could dial this in if I wanted you can see the variable going up, but it's, it's a lot easier just to sit there and hover over it and manually enter it so that's negative 12 so if my value is 12 I have a read command and a write command the write command in um, hexadecimal format this is the string packet that you need to send to the UAP via the RS-232 D9 subconnector serial or we can also accept uh, serial third-party commands via the TCP IP Ethernet port all you do is copy and paste this string packet into your control system and when we get this serial command coming into our box we will set this level to negative 12 the read is if you ever need your system to poll us and say hey what is the status of this so you can adjust your display maybe you got a meter maybe you got a fader or a knob and you want it to actually show exactly where it is well then you would send this command packet to us and it will get it will read back the value that it's currently set at so even if I come into the system and manually change this if you look over here as I move it you will see the right command move up and down as I change values but the read command never changes see it just going up or down because when you send that read command to me this right here you copy paste that in there I will just respond with the actual value that this is setting at at the time now that's to set it at a certain value if I want to say normal maybe it's going to be 0 DB then there you go that's 0 DB right there and then that's the right command we would need you to send and let's say a high volume we want to be at plus 12 DB and there you go plus 12 that's the command string you would need to send us so just copy and paste that in easy right good now let's just say you have an up or down volume button on your touch screen and you just want to when you hit the up volume you want us to go up 3 DB and when you hit the down button you want us to go down 3 DB that's easily done as well that's this window up here it's for the same element and we could set up steps on this incremental this is just a sliding scale for your incremental steps and if I put in here let's say 3 I'll put 3 DB and hit enter well there we go. the value is 3 so to increase 3 DB to make it command type increase then this is the packet that I want to see and to decrease it at the same value this is the command that I want to see so every time you send me this packet right here I'm going to increase this element up 3 DB and every time you send me this command packet or, or um, hexadecimal string then I'm going to decrease by 3 dB. I could change this. Maybe I want it to go up or down 4 dB in steps. Or maybe I want it to go 6 dB steps. However you want it to operate, this is the way you do. Now, one important thing. We also send a success and a fail command back to you when we get any serial string in there. And this is with all the commands on all the elements on all of our DSP engines and all the software. The success command that we send back is 060D is in Delta, and the fail command is 100D is in Delta. That's 100D or 060D for success and fail. And that's across the board on all of them. So make sure you write that and keep that handy. You've got that figured out on how to actually do third party commands for your elements. So, how do we do this? Say I want to trigger a message. I got some messages here, and let's just say I've got this nice gong message. And you want to be able to get third party to manually be able to trigger that. Well, that's easily done as well. As you see right here, I just pull up my message player. I actually have an event set up for the messages, but I will go to my view and my event management. There is a tutorial video on how to set up events for presets, message plays, and control output. So make sure you check out those tutorial videos. But here are all my events. But when you look at all the events in your system, you've got a column here that we've skipped on previous tutorial videos is third-party control and I can go in here and just enable third-party control for all these so I've got some message play events there's a gong I just enabled the gong for third-party control I've got some change sub preset events set in here so let's just say I, I'm going to enable one of those for third-party controls and also I have element adjust that I can actually change my selector switches through third-party control as well so I enable them so let's close that out I'll go back to my third-party controller now as you notice there are no events these are just elements set here you go over to the right you got two tabs there is the elements and then here are my events elements and events 
And here are the two events that I actually enabled, the gong message and the normal volume preset change. And they even tell you, one's a message play, the other one's a change of sub preset. Just as before, there is your command control column. I hit the three dots. And with events, they're just a trigger. You just send me a command and then I do something. There is no read to see the status because once I do it, it's done. You know, there is no the status is I'm back to where I was. Uh, we do do the success in the fail command string responses. So if you need to know, did, did it play the message? You know, did it get the serial command, you know, okay to play the message? And we'll send you the, the 060D6. And if you failed or we got parts of it, didn't understand, we'll give you the 100D fail message. So, but once again, there you go. You send me this hexadecimal command string, and then we will play this event or we will trigger this event, which happens to be a message play. So it will play that three tone gong message. Uh, if I go back to third party control and I look at the, the preset change, same thing. Change the sub preset for that event. And you can see up here it's the normal volume preset. I'll send that package string to it. Copy and paste this in. And when I get it, I'm going to change to that preset, just like I was triggering the event manually. There's another element that we've set up was a selector switch, which isn't a variable. So I'll take my third party control view window, go to back to elements over here on the right. And we see my selector switch down here in the bottom. And I go to my command, and the same thing. I could actually set this, say, if, I want, if I'm going to have four buttons, and one of them says channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, and I'm just going to hit one manually, then this is where I would set that up. If I wanted to go to channel one, here's the right command, and that's what I'm looking for. Remember, here's the read, so if I change any of these statuses, you see that the right command changes, but the read command stays the same. If I want to push a button and say go to channel three, then this is the commands packet I'm looking for. You want to go to channel 4, set value? That's the command string. Now, if I wanted to, here's my incremental. You could set it up for 2, 3, or 4, but typically I would imagine you want to bump it up or down, and you want to go up one channel or down one channel. So I just set the value for 1, and here is my increase, that selector switch 1 channel, and there it is, and then here's my decrease and that's the packet for that. So just copy and paste that into your command. So whenever I get this command string, I am going to increase this selector switch up one. And every time I get this, I am going to decrease it one. Once again, the success of fail commands, 060D for success, 100D for fail is sent back on all of them. Once you've done that, you've already assigned your elements that you want to do by, remember, we double click, we go to any element, right click, and make sure we assign it third party control command um, ability. And then we go to our third party command and actually set the parameters for each one that we want to do by going in there and then seeing what serial packet it wants. The only other thing that you really would need to know is how do you set up, you know, if your baud rate's any different or whatever like that. So what we need to do is go to make sure we check out the 232 serial port baud rate, stop it, right? So if it's different from the default, all we do is we go up to tools, machine configuration, and right up here is a tab that we have the RS-232, and we can do a read. Now once we're connected, we can actually do a read and see what it's currently set at and at this point you can go in and actually change all your baud rates you know your parity your stop bits and then once we change it where we want just hit set and you have set your machine up ready to go just remember third party control extremely easy no list or no paper list that you have to try a bunch of stuff no trial and error and you don't need modules because you go to any element you tell it how you want it to act, and we actually tell you the exact hexadecimal command string that we are looking for. I hope this was informative. As always, if you have any questions or need further information, manuals, software, spec sheets, please visit our website at www.penton-usa.com. This is Jeff Robertson. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.